All right, welcome to the channel. Please watch this whole video before making your comments or whatever. Remember that this video does contain my opinion, which seems to be the unpopular one, at least when compared to certain sources. The question is, should TriMet be free? Absolutely not. TriMet isn't government run. They're a business that needs to make money. People on Twitter stated that you should make transit free for all riders and instead increase everyone else's taxes so that transit can be free. Well now you're almost punishing people who don't use TriMet by making them pay more taxes. And wait a minute, TriMet is not a state-run business either. This is not as easy as just raise everyone's taxes. TriMet is a public service. It's a public service. It's something that the public can use. Kind of like garbage, sewer, electrical, or something simpler, a car wash, a restaurant, a literally any public service. And you know what's common about all of those? That's right. You pay for them. They're a public service. TriMet is a public service. It's serving the public. I don't see people going around all day saying, oh, I shouldn't have to pay for garbage because the garbage truck should just come to my house, take my garbage. I shouldn't have to pay for this every month. You don't see people saying that. What is the deal with having to pay 30 extra cents for a fare? I just don't get it. We're in times of insane inflation. I hope I don't sound too angry here, and I don't want to come off as sounding rude. I just want to come off as stating an opinion where you're not putting as much thought into something as you really should be. I got real fired up looking over the Twitter comments on TriMet's fare increase, because apparently Portland is the only city in the world, and nobody can compare what we do to any other city in the world, because Portland is their home and it's for them and that's all that matters and so make it free for me please. That's not how the world works. Later on in this video I will be comparing similar sized metro areas to Portland's and we'll compare their fare prices to see just how many similar transit systems to ours have free transit. Stay tuned for that. 2022 has been a bit of an unfortunate year, or at least it started that way. Lots of events have happened over the last few years, and the economy has suffered multiple times. Now this is not a political video, and I don't wish to go to that subject, but there's no denying that inflation skyrocketed in February, March area of this year. Something that used to cost $5 might now cost $6. So TriMet wanted to kind of bounce back from this whole pandemic situation and everything else that's happened over the last few years. And so they proposed a fare increase by 30 cents. So TriMet would like to bounce back from this whole decade of unfortunate events like the pandemic and other things and would like to have some extra money to fund whatever, whatever they want. So they introduced a fare increase where fares would go up by 30 cents for adult and 15 cents for reduced fare of any kind. Makes sense to me, but apparently not everyone. Like, not even close. If you go through the Twitter section of where they were talking about this fare increase, Wow, um, it's almost shocking how much you see the words, make transit free. Is that representative of the whole Portland community? Uh, probably not, but it's pretty representative of Twitter, the most toxic, I mean, okay, listen, I try and try and try to get into Twitter and I just can't. It's just not healthy. Here's another thing that proves that this whole thing is not just, oh, you can make transit free, increase everyone's taxes, and everybody will be happy, and it'll work out. Well, wait a minute. Wasn't TriMet part of a whole bunch of businesses that got help during the pandemic when all these things were closing down? Right, so that must mean that TriMet is 
a business that needs to make money. So, yeah, I mean, it really, how can it make sense to make transit free? Seems like such a good idea on the surface, but you don't have to dig down very far before you realize it's really not a good idea. And for the people making these comments, I'm not sure if you just haven't taken an economics class in school, or if you just really haven't given it any thought, or if it's monkey see monkey do and everything you read on Twitter must be correct so I'll just copy what the other person said. I'm not sure, but I like to use more brain power when coming up with decisions than just copying what everybody else says. Again, I really don't want to come across as rude in this video, but it's how I feel about this situation. Okay, there's something known as the Metropolitan Statistical Area kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of like just looking at the metro areas of regions across the U.S. And there's a whole bunch of definitions and like, oh, here's what does count, here's what doesn't. We're not going to get into that. Now, when you find a list of these metropolitan statistical areas, sometimes abbreviated as MSA, it will list them by largest population to least population. That's what I want to focus on here. Now, the Portland metro area covers more than just the city of Portland. I'm sure most people knew that already, but the Metropolitan Statistical Area lists usually multiple cities. And in this case, they do Portland, Hillsboro, Vancouver, and then they list Oregon, Washington. So it covers that area, but of course there's more cities included as well, but they're just giving you the general idea by listing those three cities. Portland ranks as number 25 on this list, so what I figure we'll do is we'll look at 10 in either direction from Portland, so numbers 15 to 35, and we'll look at their metro areas. Now, what does this have to do with transit fares? Aha, let's bring this all full circle. We're going to look at all of the transit agencies within this statistical area, whatever the main transit agency is here, and we're going to see how many of them offer free transit. Now, to spare you the boringness of going through 20 different transit agencies' website, I've gone ahead and done the work myself already and made an Excel spreadsheet, which you can fact check me on it if you want, if you would like to. I mean, I put the names of the transit agencies in there, so it should make it clear what my point is here. But I've made a spreadsheet that covers all of these cities and on the rightmost column, I have a thing for, is it free? Green for yes, red for no. Okay? So if, if what people are saying is correct, and really transit should be free, then ideally there should be a lot of green on here saying, yes, the transit agency is free, and it works. So this should be the best comparator because it's similar sized metro areas to Portland. So, similar standards for how transit should be within them. So, let's take a look at the list now. And my god, that's a lot of red. There are two transit agencies that are free. So, Kansas City and Columbus. They offer free transit. But, but wait a minute, the, the small print. Kansas City is going to resume fare collection in 2023. They relieved it temporarily, I believe because of the pandemic, and are only just now resuming fare collection. But I believe the streetcar is always free and always has been free. And honestly, I could get behind that idea because the Tacoma link in Tacoma, Washington, which is trying to be a light rail line, but let's not kid ourselves, it is a streetcar line. Well, Tacoma Link is free, and has been free for a while, and that seems to work. There are no ticket machines on the platforms or anything, you just walk in. But the line is so short that it kind of makes sense to be free. Now, for Columbus, Ohio, it says that fares have been paused indefinitely, meaning that they could come back. They likely won't for a while, but there is a possibility. So that means there is a chance that all of the things that you see on this list could be red for no, they are not free. So why would Portland's be free? I think this here was the best example I could show you for 
why Portland's just can't be free. It's never gonna be. So then you might throw in, ooh, ooh, what about DC? What about DC? What about it? Well, for those unaware, in early December, the transit company through Washington, DC, announced that service could be free around 2024. It's still in the we propose this sort of state. It's not official yet, but that's where they're headed. Well, that's great, but what does that have to do with Portland? Portland is not the only city on the planet. Like I said earlier, there are other cities. Surely, if this is such an excellent idea, tons of other cities would be going free too because we figured, oh, well, we don't really need to do fare collection. We have X, Y, and Z solution instead. But no, that's not what's happening. This, this is not the start of a chain of, oh, hey, look, 600 more transit agencies this year are deciding to go free. Yeah, no, that's not what's happening. This is one, uno, one example. This is not representative of what the rest of the U.S. and the world is doing. In fact, I challenge you to name five, heck, I'll make this easy, three other large transit agencies that are offering entirely free transit. Washington, D.C. is not one of them because it is not entirely free. Go ahead, pause the video and comment them right now. I'd really like to see them, and I will check them out. Oh, you're back? Okay, so what about D.C.? They offered free bus service starting in March 2020 because of the COVID pandemic, and then fare collection resumed in January of 2021. And at that exact same time, a downward trend was noticed in the ridership. So, fares bad? Free good? I wonder if there was a noteworthy event that happened in Washington, D.C. in January 2021. Hmm. Yes, how could I forget the riots on the Capitol building? Yeah, that was in January 2021. And while I don't think that's the only thing that caused the downward trend in ridership, crime in D.C. is not exactly great. So I could imagine that is deterring riders as well when less people want to go on your vehicles because there's more crime. And D.C. is not going to be entirely free. You heard that right. There is still going to be services you pay for. Anything that's served not within Washington, D.C., as in Maryland or Virginia services, you're still going to have to pay for. And the D.C. Metro, to, from what I understand, you're still going to have to pay for. So why is this such a big deal? It's not. So why are toxic Portland tweeters commenting about this? It's not even a similar comparison. The people on Twitter are saying make transit free, as in make it all free. And then they throw this example of DC in there. DC is not going to be entirely free. That is literally an unfair comparison. So if DC is not going to be entirely free, nowhere is going to be entirely free. People have brought up on Twitter about how free transit could attract more riders to bring the ridership numbers back. And while I do agree that that might work, again, that looks great on the surface, but scratch a little bit below that surface and you realize that these new riders probably won't be attracted to the service for long. You want to know how you attract new transit riders? You have to make your service better. You have to make it so that it makes sense to take transit over driving. And there are a lot of factors in that. Making transit free is not good enough. That's just gonna, the homeless problem that we have right now, if TriMet were to allow absolutely everything free all the time, you know how many more homeless people are gonna end up on the trains? Not everybody wants to deal with that. Having extra security on max platforms and, indeed, in the trains, which TriMet is already increasing on, cleaning vehicles more frequently, offering cheap or even free passes to employers and students, 
expanding the low income fare program to where people can ride transit for even cheaper, possibly free if they make below a really low amount of money per year, or for maybe 10 or 15 bucks a month. That would be fine. I could go on, but I almost feel as though I'm an outcast for saying that I 100% agree with the fare increase and believe that it has been inevitable for years now. It seems as though Twitter strongly disagrees with that and is just full of people who don't know how a simple transit agency works or how public services work. I even saw a comment saying public transit is a human right. <laughs> Where does it say that in the Constitution? Did you complete school? Okay, I'm sorry. Am I sorry? I don't know. I don't want to come off as rude, but seriously, this whole thing is an opinionated video that I feel strongly about. Obviously. If you think that anything I said in this video is factually wrong, I encourage you to do your own research. You have a Google, or whatever, I believe in you. But in case you don't want to do the research yourself, I will link two different videos, one from Tom Scott and one from RM Transit, that explain free transit and why it's not so great. Some things seem like an excellent idea on the surface, but you just have to do a little bit of digging and you might find out that that's not the case. Thank you for watching.